Today's adventure takes us to Plainfield, Wisconsin, the hometown of Ed Gein. Ed Gein was born August 27, 1906 to George and Augusta Gein. Ed had a brother named Henry. Henry died May 16, 1944 when Ed and Henry were burning vegetation and the fire got out of control. The fire department had to come out and Henry went missing. Ed seemed to know right where to find him. Henry was face down dead. Thought to be a heart failure since he had no burns or any other injuries. Ed was very close to his mother. She had a paralyzing stroke right after Henry died and Ed had to take care of her. On December 29th, 1945, Augusta passed away and Ed lost his only friend. Parts of 13 bodies had been found in this house. On March 20th, 1958, the house burns down. March 30th, 1958, the Gein property was sold at an auction. While searching the house, authorities had found human bones and fragments, a wastebasket made of human skin, skulls on his bedposts, bowls made from human skulls, corset made from a female torso, leggings from human leg skin, masks made from the skin of female heads, Mary Hogan's face in a paper bag, Bernice Warden's entire head in a burlap sack, the girl's dress and the vulvas of two females judged to have been about 15 years old, Four noses, lampshades, fingernails. Mary Hogan. Mary was the owner of Mary's Tavern in the town of Pine River. December 8, 1954, around 6 p.m., Sheriff Harold Thompson was called to Mary's Tavern. A neighbor found the tavern empty and there was bloodstains going from the bar room through the bar and a spot from where an automobile was parked. While searching the bar, authorities found a 32 caliber casing, two $1 bills, and a roll of nickels were on the floor. The cash box was rifled through. Mary Hogan was 55 years old and was fearful of strangers. She lived behind the bar and only unlocked the door during the day for people that she knew. They believed that she was shot while drinking coffee and reading by someone she knew. An alarm was broadcasted looking for an old 1950 or 51 dark green Dodge pickup truck with wooden racks that was seen frequently in the bar lately and seen going high speed down County Trunk D shortly after 5 p.m. with a tarp over something. A few days later, they were still looking for Miss Hogan. They questioned and cleared a Wood County man whose truck was seen and also a car that Seen there, in 1955, the county judge appointed Vilas Waterman permanent receiver for the property. Henry Sherman opened the bar back up July 1, 1955. July 22, 1956, there was a public auction of the estate. On November 4, 1957, there was a lead from an inmate in a Minnesota state prison. Inmate Lester Giles talked about beating a woman to death in a tavern in Pine Grove, Wisconsin. The sheriff never made it to the prison to question him. On November 6th, when he was scheduled to go.
Next we go to Spiritland Cemetery in Oman, Wisconsin. Many visits were made here by Ed Gein. This cemetery is one of the three sites where Ed Gein exhumed bodies of middle-aged women to fashion his human skin decor and garments. He made women's suits so he could literally become his mother. Ed Gein became the Butcher of Plainfield. He is said to have inspired the movie Cycle, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and The Silence of the Lambs. Spiritland Cemetery is said to be haunted from all of the bodies that he disturbed. Next, we go back to Plainfield, Wisconsin. On November 16, 1957, Bernice Warden disappeared in the morning hours. Bernice was a 58-year-old widow who owned the Warden Hardware and Implement Store and operated it with her son, Frank. Bernard Bruschinski, who ran the filling station across the street, said that he had seen the store truck pull out of the garage on or around 9.30 a.m. and drive off. Residents thought that the store was closed because of it being deer season. Frank told the authorities when he arrived at the store around 6 p.m., he found the cash register was open and there was bloodstains on the floor. His mom was missing and he had last seen her at 8.30 a.m. that morning when he went to go deer hunting. Frank told the sheriff that he remembered Ed Gein had been in the store Friday the day before and said that he would be back in the morning to buy a gallon of antifreeze. A sales slip for a gallon of antifreeze was the last item Mrs. Warden had written before she disappeared. Sheriff Sly went to the Gein farmhouse and found the body in the lean-to and broke open the door. Ed Gein was at a nearby country store, the West Plainfield grocery store, eating supper, and that was where he was arrested. Friends of Ed's remember him joking about having Mary Hogan up at his house. On November 21st, 1957, Ed pled not guilty by reason of insanity at his arraignment. A hearing was then waived. During interrogation, Ed had confessed to slaying both Mary and Bernice. January 6, 1958, experts called Ed Gein insane. Dr. Ed Schubert, director of the Wisconsin State Hospital for the Criminally Insane, said that he was legally insane and incompetent to stand trial.
February 7, 1958, the new law forced Crime Lab to stop investigating. Washera County District Attorney did not want the investigation to continue if the county had to pay for it. Parts of 13 bodies had been found. March 20th, 1958, the house mysteriously burns down. March 30th, 1958, the Gein property was sold at an auction that 2,500 people had come to. On June 28, 1974, Ed Gein tried to get released in court. He was denied his request for freedom. May 1978, he was transferred to the Mendota Institute, where he died July 26, 1984, of cancer. He was buried in the same cemetery as Bernice Warden. Here was where Ed was buried. When we went, it was the day before Halloween, and there was this weird hair by it, and people dig holes, and I guess they collect the dirt to sell. Here's where Ed's brother Henry was buried. Ed does not have a headstone because it kept getting stolen. Here's where Ed's mother Augusta was buried. And here's where Ed's father is. I did find a picture of what Ed's headstone was. If you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up.